Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. This is the new 2025 Volvo EX30 and it's a big deal. That's because it's a fully electric crossover with a starting price of under $40,000. And it looks good, and the specs are impressive, and it's actually nice. <laughs> this is amazing on paper. And so today, I'm going to review the EX30 in person, and I'll show you all of its quirks and features. <laughs> Alright, time for the quirks and features of the EX30. I'm going to start with a brief overview before I get into the really quirky stuff, and trust me, there's a lot. So, this is Volvo's new entry-level electric vehicle, starting price being advertised around $35,000. Now, with shipping, that comes to a little over $36,000, and of course, that's before options, but still a tremendously impressive price point considering the average new car is just under $50,000, and most new electric cars are a lot more than that. Even fully equipped with all the options, the EX30 will likely only be in the low $50,000 range, which is an excellent price point for a brand new electric crossover. Now, the EX30 is going to be offered in two versions. The entry-level model has a single motor, it's rear-wheel drive, with about 270 horsepower and about 275 miles of range. Or you can upgrade to a dual-motor EX30. That adds all-wheel drive and it boosts power to over 420 horses. And the range penalty is small, about 265 miles of range. Now, both of these are pretty strong performers. Even the entry-level EX30 does 0-60 to 60 in the low 5-second range, but the dual-motor model do it in 3.4 seconds, which is seriously quick. As for charging, Volvo says it can go from 10% to 80% charge in about a half an hour, so it is very fast charging capable if you can find the charger. And by the way, the entry-level single-motor EX30, that's the $35,000 one, of course. This is a single motor model as well, but with some options and extras for a sticker price in the low $40,000 range. If you want to upgrade to dual motors, figure somewhere in the mid $40,000 price point to start. But anyway, next we move on to the EX30's quirks and features, which are numerous and very quirky. For one thing, there's no key. Instead, you get this credit card size key card, which functions as a key. You hold it in a certain spot, it unlocks the doors and you can climb in. And that way you can keep it in a wallet or purse and you won't lose your key. Volvo says you'll soon have the functionality to use your cell phone as a key. So as long as you have your phone on you, you can just climb inside. It'll automatically unlock and you can drive away. No key needed. Now, when you open the door, you'll notice the inside is a little unorthodox. That's because a huge portion of this car's interior is recycled or recyclable materials. And Volvo says the upper part of the door panel is recycled window frames, which is why it has this sort of unusual texture. The car wasn't intended to just be electric, but also sustainable. You also have this very cool door handle that you can pull to get out. Very minimalist. It looks neat, and it's exciting to use. But you're looking at the door, and you're probably wondering, where is everything? Where are all of the usual door controls? And the answer is... Well, minimalism. The interior of this car is really designed around the function of minimalism, simplicity. Everything is intended to be distilled down to basically only what's necessary, and so you don't have an overwhelming amount of buttons or switches or controls. In fact, you have basically none at all. So to illustrate that, let's start with the things you'd expect to find on the door panel. The power window switches are located here in the center. There's only two switches, left and right. 
right. If you want to roll down the back windows, you tap this icon that says rear, and then your window switches are controlling the rear windows instead. Tap it again, and they're back to the front. The power door locks, you can see, are right next to the window switches. Lock and unlock on this capacitive touch panel, easily accessible to driver and passenger rather than on individual door panels. As for the rear view mirror controls, they're integrated into the center screen. You tap on this little car icon and then on the mirror control, and you can then use your steering wheel buttons to adjust the mirror up, down, left, right, side, side, wherever you want the mirror to be. Now, of course, once you have everything set, Volvo tells me that the car will remember based on the key card or the phone exactly which driver is in the car and thus where you want your things positioned so you don't have to use this stuff very often. And speaking of the screen, it also opens up the glove box. You can see at the bottom here, there's an icon that says glove box. You push that and it opens up in the center, in the middle, instead of on the passenger side of the dashboard, which is very unorthodox, but allows Volvo to cut costs. They have to make a left-hand drive version for some countries, a right-hand drive version for others, but putting the glove box in the middle means it's one less thing they have to change when they build that car. It allows them to engineer this EX30 to the price point they were trying to hit. So it makes sense. And as you look around the EX30, you can find all sorts of other examples of simplified manufacturing in order to cut costs and add minimalist simplicity to this interior. For example, the seat control on the side, there's only one control. Rather than splitting the bottom, the headrest, the backrest into separate switches, it's all on one. And it's very intuitive. You just basically twist it the direction you want to go, and it goes there. It's very simple. And if you want to adjust other stuff, you press the center of the seat control, and then more adjustments pop up on the screen. You then use the seat control based on the menu on the screen to adjust like your lumbar support or your lower thigh support. And it's all pretty simple, actually. It's a pretty good idea to have the seat control done this way. And the minimalism carries over basically everywhere else in this interior too. For example, there is no start button in this car. You don't get in and twist a key or push a button. Instead, you get in, it recognizes you from your smartphone or your key card, and once you're sitting down, the car is on and ready to drive. No start button needed. You'll also notice there are no controls here in the center console. No buttons or switches here at all. Instead, you have two wireless chargers located side by side in the middle, which is pretty cool. You also have this storage compartment here in the center below the seat bottoms where you can stick stuff and open up the flaps at the base of this compartment and you have even more storage for more items and USB-C ports in there for charging even more devices. But probably the most clever storage component in the front seats is the cup holders. To access them, you press this big panel below the window switches and then they pop out. There are two cup holders if you want them, but they don't have to be cup holders. You can push back the upper cup portion of this storage panel and it becomes just storage if you want. And you can even have it at only one cup holder. So you can have part storage and part cup holder. And you can even push the whole thing back so it's only halfway out, giving you just one cup holder if you want. It's a pretty neat way to do, well, cup holders. And when it's away, very minimalist. So you may be wondering, okay, well then where exactly are all of the controls in this car that's supposed to be in the center console, where did they go? And the answer is, of course, they're all in the screen. The car controls have all migrated in here. The power tailgate release is in the screen. The defroster is in the screen. I already showed you the mirror controls, but your headlight controls are in here too. Every function basically has now been moved to the screen. And that includes your climate controls, which I suspect is going to be controversial, but yes, the climate controls are in the screen and you can access them at the bottom of the screen by tapping on like the fan icon or the temperature to change the temp. Now, all of this might get kind of annoying, except that the EX30 is equipped with Google Assistant and it makes everything really easy because you can basically just ask it to do something and frankly, it will and it's easy to do. Take a look. Hey Google, turn on the air conditioning. Sure, turning on the AC. Hey Google, turn down the air conditioning. 
Hey Google, turn down the fan. Hey Google, turn on the defroster. Now, one other interesting control accessed from the vehicle controls menu is this weird mood setting that the EX30 offers. You tap on this and you can select between different moods that will change the interior ambient lighting color and display a certain image on the screen and play music to match the mood. For example, this is Northern Light. Now, my personal favorite is Forest Bath because, well, frankly, it sounds kind of ominous. Here you go. The most interesting, however, is unquestionably a Nordic Twilight, which seems like it would be very calm, but instead it sounds like this. Ah yes, Nordic Twilight. Sounds like Heathrow security during the Christmas rush. <laughs> Anyway, beyond those weird things, a lot of other stuff to cover in this screen, but the most interesting part is this home screen, which really gives you everything in one basic screen. You got your navigation map up here, as you can see, you have your music and your phone also down below. You get your temperature, your time, direction of travel, everything you might want to see is fit onto this home screen, and it's a very, very useful screen. And controversially, it also includes all of your current vehicle functions. That means the current speed you're traveling is on the top of the home screen. The gear you're in, reverse, drive, park on the home screen. Same deal with the mileage you've traveled and the amount of miles you have left before you run out of range, your current charge percentage. It's all at the top of the home screen in the middle. And I say that's controversial because they've put it there instead of the usual place directly behind the steering wheel where you'd have a gauge cluster. Now, this was another decision done surely to say, cost. You didn't have to make a left-hand drive gauge cluster and a right hand. You didn't have to do more software for extra screens, but it's a little unorthodox having all that information in the center screen instead of right in front of you. Now, you've already seen this setup. If you drive a Tesla Model 3 or a Model Y or a 2004 Saturn Ion, you're already used to this, but it will certainly be a little unorthodox and maybe even disorienting for some people. Now, it is worth noting that even though Virtually everything is in this screen. There are some physical controls in this car. For instance, on the steering wheel, the controls on the left side adjust your driver assist technology. Your following distance, your cruise control speed, that sort of thing is changed over there. On the right side, these controls adjust some radio basics, like your next track, your previous track, changing the volume, and this little microphone will pull up Google Assistant for you if you don't want to constantly be saying, hey Google. There are also two stocks coming off the steering column. On the left side, controlling your high beams, your turn signals, and your windshield wipers. You can adjust all that on the left. And over on the right, that's your gear selector to go into reverse, neutral, drive, park is a little button on the end. So some basic physical controls. Plus, your climate vents are controlled normally, if you will, with a little switch. You can move it up, down, left, right. You don't have to go into the screen to adjust your climate control positioning like you do in some cars. And next we move on to the back seat, which I gotta say is pretty tight as you can see. If you have a tall driver sitting up front, a tall passenger in back is gonna have some trouble. That is no surprise because the EX30 is only about 167 inches long, which is about 18 inches shorter than the XC60, which is Volvo's sort of more compact crossover. This is a very small city 
family-friendly, city-focused SUV, it's not intended to be huge for carrying big people. Of course, Volvo will soon be debuting the EX90, which is its full-size electric SUV. That's going to have rear legroom for days. This one is a little tighter. Now, as you can imagine, there are quite a few interesting quirks and features in back, just like up front. I'll start here in the center with the power window switches, again in the middle and kind of small and minimalisty, easily reachable by rear seat occupants on both sides. You also have two USB-C charge ports here next to the rear window switches, which is a nice place to put them to charge your devices. And in this rear center console area, you also have a storage compartment down below, as you can see, a pretty large one where you can stick, well, basically whatever you want, and it's removable. You can take it out and put stuff in it if you want and then stick it back there. And on the side of this storage compartment, there's a little scene that includes a moose because this car is Swedish and so they have to have a moose on their storage compartment side hidden scene. Of course they do. This moose apparently has a name, Morton the Moose, and it's very strange but very quirky, which we like. And by the way, speaking of storage back here, one cool thing, in the back of the front seats you have a storage pocket, pretty standard, but there's also built in a smaller storage pocket, perfectly sized for smartphones, so you don't lose them back here and they don't fall deeper into the normal storage pocket. That's a pretty cool idea. Last thing worth pointing out in the back seat is this giant glass panel on the roof. This doesn't open, but it is huge, and it eliminates any possible feeling of claustrophobia that you might have in the back of this car. It lets the sunlight come in and lets you look out and see everything above you and to the sides. A huge glass panel. And next up, we move on to the storage situation in this car, starting with the cargo area. Now, to access this, you press a black button that's sort of hidden in the black trim on the back of the car, which is kind of a cool idea. You push that, the tailgate opens up and reveals the cargo area, which is decent sized considering the relatively small overall size of the EX30. It's a pretty small car, but you have some decent storage space and there are some cool practical solutions in this cargo area. For instance, the cargo cover. If you remove it, there is enough space under the cargo floor where you can stick it if you want a place to put it so you don't just have to leave it behind. And speaking of the cargo floor, it has various levels. You can see right now sort of the standard default level, or you can remove it and install it at a lower level if you have some taller item that needs more space to clear. And there's even a lower, lower level. So if you have the storage floor on its lower level, there's still a lower level so that you can put smaller items so they won't roll around mixed in with the rest of the cargo. It's pretty impressive packaging in the back of the EX30. And just in case case you're questioning whether something will fit inside your EX30, why there's a handy little chart on the inside of the tailgate. This shows the dimensions back here, both the cargo area and the cargo area with the seats folded down, and it shows all of your basic items that will fit in the back of the EX30, apparently including this robot. <laughs> At least I think that's what it is. It may actually be a backpack. Now, it's worth pointing out, speaking of stuff that will fit, you can lower the rear seats in this car, of course, and they fold flat for an additional cargo space and a really decent sized load area. You also have more cargo storage up front in the front trunk. To access it, you pull the latch and the driver footwell, pull it twice, and then open up the front trunk, and there's a little compartment up there, not huge, but some storage for some stuff. And finally, we move on to the outside of the EX30. The exterior design and styling, which I have to say is excellent. Volvo has done a great job with styling and design on all of their recent vehicles, and the EX30 is no exception, but it's especially impressive considering the price point. It has a modern, conventionally attractive, not at all controversial overall look that's just plain nice. This is an attractive car with attractive looks for a 
reasonable price point, and I think they've done a great job making it look like they have. And adding to the overall look is the lighting of the EX30, both front and rear. You can see nice-looking modern LEDs that contribute to its overall attractive look. They're not especially quirky or weird or interesting. They don't do any strange dances, whatever, but it is attractive both in front and back, and it does help make the EX30 look even nicer. As for interesting exterior quirks in the EX30, one is badging. It only says EX30 here on this rear pillar on the side of the car. You don't have any EX30 badge on the tailgate, which is certainly unusual, but this car is a little unusual. And speaking of badging, I also like the fact that the front camera is actually integrated into the front Volvo badge. You can see here on the, well, non-existent grill because EVs don't need one. There's the Volvo badge and the camera below, which is kind of a cool touch. And another one, how about the fact that there's defroster lines mounted right here on the windshield directly in front of the sensors for the driver assist technology. You know you're a Swedish company when you think to mount defroster lines here because this matters <laughs> to the perpetually frozen Swedish population. Kind of an interesting quirk. All right, driving the EX30. This car has gotten, there's been a lot of excitement around it. I've been kind of surprised actually just how much excitement there has been. Um, but the concept of an affordable electric car has been something that a lot of automakers have kind of teased, kind of announced, then sort of pulled back, and no one's ever really been able to come out. I mean, the average new car is on just under $50,000 now, so the concept of a new EV that is nice, from a nice brand like Volvo, being thirty-six to maybe low fifties thousand. I mean, that's a really, really reasonable amount of money. And I think it's excited a lot of people. Now, one interesting thing I noted, this is the single motor car, so it only has about 270 horsepower. It still does zero to 60 in the low fives. To me, that's an impressive figure. Um, people who are used to the Tesla Model Y performance and Mach-E GTs are gonna look at that and say, well, it's not all that fast, but this is, it's, for most people, especially people who are in this kind of world of, oh, I want an affordable EV to drive around town, this is gonna be plenty fast for virtually everybody. It's nice and quiet in here, which is, which is great. You know, some electric cars, because you don't have the sound of the engine to kind of mask other stuff that's going on, you hear a little bit more than you would, you would expect. That was a problem a lot with the earlier EVs, but not really the situation here. Uh, sitting in a stoplight, cars going by, people, whatever, you don't really hear much. Now, this is a pretty small crossover. The seating position isn't, you're not sitting up high like you are in a Chevy Tahoe. I mean, you, 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 it's, a, it's a crossover. It's certainly higher than like sedans, etc. But you're not, you don't have this commanding view of the road like you probably would get in an EX90 or an XC90, etc, etc. Um, just based on its size. It's more of a city friendly. It's not intended to be on stilts. It's not intended to be huge. It's a city friendly little vehicle. Sitting here in the car, I'm struck by the fact that it feels honestly kind of normal, which is sort of what they're going for. I mean, I you don't want to rock the boat too much when you're asking people to accept a new powertrain propulsion system. Um, and so this car kind of just feels like a car and drives like a car. And there has been some controversy over, okay, well, a lot of the stuff is operated through the uh, infotainment screen. You don't have your physical mirror controls. You don't have your physical this and that. It's not really all that hard. You can talk to the car to do a lot of the stuff. And this is just how cars generally are going. More and more cars are incorporating stuff into the screen. I think that a lot of the old school, I like my buttons, people are, are gonna be upset about it, but I suspect they're not really in the target demo for this car anyway. This is for people who are used to operating technology, cars with screens, phones with screens, computers with screens. And so they're the people who, who are gonna buy the car and they're gonna be the people who are comfortable with it. All right, I'm gonna give it a little gas here and let's see what we can do. Yeah, I mean, this is fast. Like, as far as I'm concerned, this is fast. It's certainly gonna be fast enough for everyone who, who gets one of these, who buys or leases it. This is, it, it actually, to me, feels faster than low five seconds, zero to 60 uh, suggests, which is kind of an EV thing because there's so much initial kick in basically every electric car, but it feels nice and quick. And this is a pretty rough road and it handles it well. I'm actually surprised the ride quality is one of the bigger surprises I have about, th about this car. You hear of cars engineered to a certain price point, uh, and a certain size class, and you think that they're not gonna be that smooth or comfortable, but it is. It, it feels really, really nice. It feels very stable. Again, ride quality is good. Um, you do definitely hear a little bit more on the highway, like in all cars, 
a little bit more tire noise, road noise from other cars, etc. Certainly, I think this is intended to be more of like a sort of city car or a suburban city car, that kind of thing. All right, so I've got pilot assist on, which is the uh, driver assist tag. And it, it was in traffic before, it was doing great. Uh, stopping, going, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, just like you'd expect from a system like this. The system won't change lanes for you, and you have to keep your hand on the wheel essentially to let it know that you're basically there and babysitting it. But it seems to work well in, in stop and go traffic, which is the best application for these driver assist technologies. This is an excellent car. It really drives well. I think the technology and everything is fantastic. To me, the really impressive thing is the price point. I'm stunned that this car can deliver this experience at this price point. The interior is a little bit minimalist, but that's kind of in right now. And it's minimalist in a cool way. It has everything you want. It's all on the screen, but it has everything you want. It's comfortable. It rides very well. Your seating position is decent. It looks good. The numbers on paper are great. If Volvo can actually deliver these things in the mid 30 to low $40,000 price point, it's kind of a game changing car. No one else has really been able to do that despite a lot of people saying they would. And a lot of people said they would back before inflation was crazy uh, and still couldn't. And this is a pretty impressive car. And I have a suspicion these are gonna be quite popular. Everybody's been excited about it. There's been a lot of hype and interest in it. And I'm excited for when it comes out and when they start getting delivered. And so that's the new 2025 Volvo EX30, a fully electric crossover that seems to have it all. Style, decent luxury, good technology, good range, performance, all at a shockingly affordable price point. This is going to be a hit, and now it's time to give the new EX30 a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 65 out of 100, which puts the EX30 here against some similar electric crossovers. This is actually a great score, as the EX30 beats or ties all the other non-performance models. Everything that scored higher has a zillion horsepower and crazy acceleration. If you wanna skip that stuff, but you want a competent, well-designed, high-tech, attractive, reasonably affordable electric crossover, the EX30 is exactly what you want. It's a bit tight in back, but this should be a big hit given its price point and its other excellent benefits.